Hello everybody, this is Speaker Freak 95 and today, well, I'm not going to announce it, you know what time it is. We're going to be recoding this Eminence 18-inch uh, subwoofer, or woofer, and uh, I have all the parts ready. Let me get this thing put back together and working correctly. And uh, compromising foundations of places I do sound at for years to come. Let's get this going. I had concerns in the last clip whether this full squeal would have to be reused. And I was delight delighted to know that the new full squeal that I got right here um, is exactly the same kind of full squeal. Same diameter, same dimensions and everything. And uh, it even ma uh, reads DC resistance very, very close, like one or two uh, points away from the original coil over here that you see. This one isn't cooked like the other one. Fits perfectly inside here, so we're going to go with it. And it's also known to hold on to this, take the cone off, and uh, see how high these are set within the voice coil gap in respect to the back plate and the uh, motor structure here. So that's why we're holding on to this. why I still have this. Otherwise I would have plugged this into the wall outlet and had fun. That's what I'll do when I'm done with this uh, since I don't need the voice coil. And no one wants a fried voice coil. Um, but if anyone actually wants this voice coil, I'll just send this whole thing to you if you want it. Because I have no choice but to just really throw it away or just something. But I am going to use it a little bit. I'm going to take a part of the spider out and we'll do some measurements to see how high it is in respect to the back plate and so on and so forth. Now we've got the gap cleaned out. Um, while I was doing that, I took this paintbrush that we used from the last recone um, to um, get out all the dust and uh, fiberglass material and stuff like that from when this was installed in its last enclosure. And now we're going to go ahead and dry fit all the components. First of all, we can try the full coil. I've already done it, but I want to go ahead and try it again. So make sure it uh, doesn't bind up and uh, as you see it, it goes right to the bottom. There's a lot of room for full coin movement on this thing. And so that's which is cool. So set that aside, have it harm's way. Um, pretty obvious. You'll either know whether it'll work or not. The speaker cone obviously will fit. Let's get an idea of what this will look like here. We'll just dummy all this together. That's not what the dust cap looks like. Flip that over. There we go. That's what we're going to aim for here. Here's the spider, the lower suspension, which uh, I'll show you exactly where that's going. Oh no, I just blew my speaker again. Um, obviously, this is a proper fit. Um, so, we'll get on that aspect of things. So, we're going to go ahead and get the voice coil all put in here and shim it to proper height. That's what we're going to take this old cone here. We're going to, we're going to take this, we're going to remove the cone. We're going to get about an idea of how high this needs to be in respect to the uh, motor structure here. So, uh, bear with me here. So, completely destroying the old speaker cone, we're going to dispose of it anyways. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of an idea here of uh, what we're going to do. And uh, <clears throat> setting the uh, spider down here. Because this is warped, we can't get an absolute perfect idea, but um, and plus I didn't think about this, doing this actually, I uh, cut it. I guess we could take the new spider and put it on here. There we go. See, that'll work. 
something like that. That's pretty much how it works. Uh, that looks janky as heck, but I'm just going to get an idea of a normal resting point where this is flat, not pushed in or pushed out. I uh, want, want to get an idea of uh, how, how much winding you can see. And uh, I'll measure that on the new uh, false coil as well. So I'll go ahead and mark it with a Sharpie or whatever, and uh, we'll get that part done. So here's the original voice coil. I was able to crack the glue off of here without breaking these tinsel leads and stuff. I'll remove that later. But the uh, there's two lines here. This is the, where the new spider sat. This is where the old one sat. The old one, this darker line down here, is what we're going to go with because um, I was a bit off. And I just removed it where the uh, spider at bottom edge was sitting. And you can see right above that where the glue was. And we're going to make very uh, the same. So basically, these coils are exactly the same, except this one's made of a slightly different material, and I drew all over it. But um, we're going to go ahead and mark the uh, new Fools coil where the new spider will sit for proper height. So if you look closely, there's the new Fools coil and uh, spider assembly um, without even shimming it. If you look closely, it's moving evenly, and it's sitting very, very evenly. Uh, it's very easy to knock it out of center because it's not glued, but it's loose. But you can see right there, it's, uh, it's sitting in there nicely. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So as you can see, around here, I've marked a voice coil where the uh, spider will sit. And uh, we have proper height here. It's not super critical, um, but then again it is because you don't want this to slap the bottom of the plate. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the, uh, if you have a shim of some sort, it's a good idea that you invest in one. Make sure it's clean. Just did that. You might have heard me brushing out of my pants there. I'm just going to do a dry fit real quick. And I'm going to clean this back out again. Take the new voice coil. Yeah, that ensures that it's nice and straight. It's not real tight in there, so we might have to use the bonus shims or pieces of paper or something to make it a little stiffer so it doesn't move. I'm going to go ahead and insert the shim here. Of course, I keep getting like just debris back in here, so let me clean that out once again. So I just cleaned the shim. So let me go ahead and take the shim or centering shim, whatever you want to call it. You can call it Larry if you want to, who cares? Let's throw it like that. Uh, it's common to install them 180 degrees uh, away from the input terminals. It doesn't really matter. Um, just as long as you get it in there nicely. Go ahead and insert the voice coil. This is the way it moves during operation. Um, so you're doing a ter 2 hertz tone, it's like this, or 20 hertz, which I can't do that quick. But, um, we'll go ahead and uh, insert the spider next. Move these tinsel leads down to hold the voice coil up a little. So it doesn't slide down too much when we put this uh, spider on here. around it. We'll set proper, proper height in a moment and we'll uh, get that glued in there. Okay, figured out my proper height here. Let's hope it doesn't move. But I've got a way to uh, measure it using a uh, clothespin here. Make sure the tinsel leads are nice and straight with the uh, input terminal plate here. Don't want to make an oopsie or make a sloppy repair. That would be absolutely terrible. I would be so pissed off if I got that wrong. And move these tinsel leads down here, shove it out of the way of the new cone. And I'll go ahead and double check my height. Do a test fit here. Make sure that it'll sit down on the voice coil okay. That it does. Keep it centered in the camera. 
Okay, that's good. Um, and sometimes, if this uh, is not wide enough, you can take like a pin or something and widen it out like that a little. Oh, you can't even see that. Take a pin or something and widen, widen that out a little bit, uh, or whatever. Or if it's too wide, you can uh, bend it in a little bit. Um, either way. Okay, even though it's not centered in the picture, I got the cone put back on here for a temporary uh, moment. Tensor leads are here. I'm going to go ahead and fold these back down. They were up because I uh, took a marker and uh, marked my temporary fake tensile leads on there. So I know where to dress the wire and make the holes right here. Um, within the dust cap, of course. You don't want to make it outside the dust cap. Obviously, we're well within tolerance here. And uh, even a JBL dust cap would uh, work, but that's not the point. Um, and uh, we'll make two little holes here and here they are. And there's your holes. You may not be able to see it, but I went ahead and dated the cone. I'm going to go ahead and remove this whole entire assembly. And the reason for the tinsel leads being bent over the former is you can set this like that, and it'll set there in one continuous piece. I'm going to go ahead and the, uh, apply the glue to the spider landing here. I don't know how well you can see that. I hope you can see it decently. The speed isn't exactly perfect, but we'll take a end of a clothespin. Don't want any spillovers. And uh, move the bead around to an even degree. You want plenty of glue, obviously. Not too much. There's a fine line between too little, the perfect amount, and uh, two fine lines, excuse me. Um, two fine lines uh, between perfect, too much, or too little. And that's obviously what you don't want to have don't want to happen right there. Doesn't matter, it's on the inside, no one's gonna see it except for the thousands of people who watch this video, but that's not relevant, but <laughs> we can just take the nozzle back through and spread it around, apply it a little bit more as you go um, to places that need it, like just right there. Oh my huge cranium wasn't in the way. Just like that. And uh, we'll take apart a clothespin here. Make sure it's uh, all spread around here. And we'll take the horse coil and uh, shim assembly here and not let it explode out into the. Uh, you might have just saw that. That was so awesome. Uh, we'll go ahead and set that in there and I'll put the. Uh, I'll put the shim back in there in just a moment. The good thing is that the voice coil is relatively, uh, the diameter of the spider and the voice coil are so alike that it's very hard for the voice coil to, uh, or not very easy for me to move the voice coil out of the original spot. So I had to do that again. I don't know if you saw that. I doubt it, but that was weird. Because of the nature of plastic, it bent back into its original shape and uh, flung out of my hand. And then take an old broken clothespin here. I prefer wood ones, but it doesn't matter. And we'll press it out. You'll see it come out of the edge. That's what you want. And uh, on JBL ones, you might be able to see the glue so through the uh, JBL and RCF ones, uh, especially if they're factory spiders. They're made of a little bit thinner material, and you can see it soak through. I don't know. This one's not really doing that, but you can actually see the glue soak through the spider. That's what you want. Yeah, it's, it's doing it here and a few other places. And uh, clean up any excess that runs off. And uh, we'll let that dry. I'm going to make sure this sits for about an hour or so. Um, I do mine a little bit quicker, about 35 minutes. Um, it's 9.35, ironically enough, so we'll wait about, until about 9.50. Apply a bead of glue for the uh, cone. That's the two-part epoxy. You can also use the stuff which you can get at Simply Speakers. 
Um, I get a lot of my glues from that particular uh, location or place. Um, and uh, But more often than not, I'll use the two-part epoxy, this material here. It's really nice. It smells like skunk, but it works. And uh, we'll do that in a couple minutes. But due to the magic of video editing, it'll be right now. Before we proceed, we want to make sure that I just give you a quick tip that I use. Um, sometimes I have spare dust caps. This one would be a spare. And uh, we take it and set it over this while the uh, edge, the spider landing, is drying. Just prevent any uh, dust and debris um, to, of getting inside the Vos coil and uh, causing any further issues. Let's move on. Also good to have some sweet tea while you're uh, reconing your speaker. Okay, we're going to go ahead and glue, uh, apply a nice, awesome bead of glue, this two-part epoxy here, um, on the speaker. don't know how much I can show here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, apply the glue here. I'm not exactly liking the way the spider's made with that uh, little lip right there where it goes up. But it's alright. This is for the cone second one is for the top part of the cone to attach to the uh, Voss Coil former paper captain material or whatever that is on the outside. So I'm going to move that without moving it out of the view angle. Whoops, drop some on the cone, that's okay. Or not on the cone, but on the uh, spider, but it's alright. We'll get that later when we're uh, done applying glue. Got the glue applied, cleaned up the extra that I dropped right here. You might see on the corner of your screen. A little pissed about that, but it's all right. I'm trying to get that centered in the view, but everything sticks to the magnet. That's what you want right there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set the cone down. Want to make sure we have the tinsel leads uh, right here. Want to make sure we have the two two holes that would be drilled in the cone earlier in the proper spot. I'm going to set it off a little bit. reason being is we can set it down in there and spin it back and forth, get a nice even bead. Make it look machine made almost. Uh, spin it out, it, it evens out all the wide and small spots in the glue line itself that you made. And line it up as best as you can with the uh, uh, tensile leads and the terminal post. Look real closely at the shiny part there. That's what we're after. That's the look that we want. And uh, there's the two little holes. Fairly centered. Um, you can see the glue on the spider landing here. Nice and dry, soaked through a little bit, that's okay. There's the glue right there for the uh, uh, cone. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a second uh, layer of glue right here. If you look closely, we have the bead of glue. We're gonna take the cone and we're gonna spin it just to cover up any little holes. Sometimes you leave little gaps. And we'll just spin that about an inch off center here. Back and forth, make sure to line this up again. Make sure it's pressed all the way down on the voice coil. So if you get here, and it is, we'll come back at 10.30. It is 10.05, and uh, we'll apply glue to the edge. For the edge, we're going to go ahead and use this MI3035 material that you can get at uh, Simply Speakers or some other website. Uh, use Simply Speaker stuff because it's uh, it's the most handy in certain situations and uh, good price on the stuff. Here is the uh, we're going to glue this here on the edge, just like that, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that once this dries. It hasn't dried yet. a nice uh, one-eighth or larger bead of glue 
on the frame here. show you what we're going to aim for here. Going closely down inside there, you'll see that bead of glue. It's kind of hard for me to show you. Can't pick up the speaker. It's 15 pounds um, easily enough, quickly enough, but uh, around 15 pounds. It's pretty heavy for a speaker. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a continuous bead. I want to be pretty generous, especially around the spider area and on the edge. Sorry for the dogs barking. People are visiting. We have visitors. It's always a good thing. The dogs don't always see it that way. The dogs like to bark and yelp and yap and clatter and clitter around and be stupid. Try not to get it all over you. And what do you say, my friend Patrick's here with us? What do you say, Patrick? It's dark. Now that we've got the glue applied, we want to go ahead and uh, just press the surround in there. You'll see it come through the uh, surround a little bit. And uh, I did use a good bit of, of uh, glue there. This is the way I roll. But um, probably a little too much. But it's all right. Take a clothes pin and. Uh, press that down through there. You'll see it soak through and it will come back up in a certain uh, few places. Especially when they pack these in cardboard boxes, the edges get smashed. Which is uh, stupid nonetheless, but it's okay. You have to retouch those spots um, that come back up and you can see right through here. This keeps press uh, coming back up, but you'll just have to continuously press it down. Um, but, if you work at it, um, get a good, good adhesion here. And that's what you're looking for. Hello guys, I'm back. I just farted and uh, the glue is dry on the edge for the most part, uh, but I am going to wait an extra long period of time uh, for this to dry. Um, because if you, do, if you do this too early, when you apply the PVA or polyvinyl adhesive, um, which is a, a tacky clear coat to prevent air from seeping through the uh, surround, it can react uh, to this glue a little bit and bubble and cause a little uh, artifacts on the edge, as I call it, and it doesn't look that pretty. So I'm going to wait till that's completely dry, and, uh, and uh, we'll uh, apply the PVA or polyvinyl material. This is a uh, this is good for uh, paper cone edge surrounds or foam or cloth. Um, rubber doesn't need it, obviously. This material here. And uh, for the dust cap and lead wires, we'll be using the black glue here. Okay, we waited for some time for this to <coughs> dry, and uh, we'll take the shim out and do a quick movement test. I already did this. It's good, no rubbing. I'm happy. We'll take a 9-volt battery on the tinsel leads here, um, just for poops and giggles, so we can test it out. Force coil is good. And uh, just just for reassurance, we'll go ahead and re put the uh, shim back in there. The glue hasn't cured completely yet, so it does have the capability to move. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in there, just to make sure. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and put on this uh, PVA material with a uh, small brush here. And we'll brush it on like we did uh, before. And then after that's dried, we'll put on the um, cardboard edge gaskets here. And we'll line them up with the holes uh, as uh, as needed. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and dress the lead wires. Okay, because um, the last video that I uploaded was uh, the JBL and it had large tags, and you can just solder directly down here. These are quite different, and what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to move these out. I'm gonna take. Uh, eight inch piece of this wire here and I'm gonna have to uh, run it into the speaker itself place like that and I'm gonna have to spin this wire around it like that and solder it okay 
If you look real closely at this one here, I have the wire tightly coiled around the flex lead here, uh, unlike this one. And that's what you want to look for, and we'll cut off the excess once it's uh, soldered. When I solder, I take a smaller dust cap that's you know smaller than what's needed, and I'll cover that up to prevent small balls of solder. <laughs> I said balls. Small uh, small balls of solder from dripping down inside there and solder resin material to get inside the full screw and cause nasty noises and uh, a really pissed off person. So we're going to go ahead and solder these. For this job, we're going to be using the welder WT CPT CPT TPT welder soldering iron. And for amplification purposes, we're going to be using this PV CS1200. I am a little tired and slap happy, but it's okay. I just noticed with the smaller uh, dust cap that this looks like a PV Black Widow. That's kind of funny. And uh, obviously it'll sound better than a PV Black Widow. I don't have anything against PV products anyways, as you might notice. You might notice the uh, blade I got here. That's to protect the dust cap from debris from the soldering iron because these uh, soldering irons are just solder soldering in, in general creates an, a little bit of a mess so I'm going to shield the uh, dust cap from that Just like that. What I did is I took the extra lead that was sticking up. I didn't have my cutters, but we'll just go ahead and just take it and bend it down like that. And uh, it looks very nice. Uh, this is much better than the one I did on the JBL. And you see, I just took the extra lead like that and soldered and tinned. <coughs> and uh, well, soldered. Soldered and tinned is like saying soldered and soldered, tinned and tinned. There I go, uh, talking about random things again. And uh, we'll make it look like that. Dress them up in the black uh, speaker glue here, specifically made for dust caps uh, and uh, uh, tinsel leads and lead wires. I'm going to go ahead and dress these up in the uh, black glue, the tinsel leads here. Um, if you look them closely, I went ahead and soldered these connections. Eminence dotted them with glue and crimped them. I crimped them and then soldered them. I'll cut off the excess whenever I feel like it which will be very closely uh, in a few minutes. And uh, I'll go ahead and dress these and show you what they look like. Uh, but save time, this minute's pretty dragged out. So uh, the video's pretty long. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There they are. They're not perfect, but it'll be under the dust caps. It really doesn't matter. And uh, I just wanna wish everyone a happy July 4th. Um, tomorrow, or actually it's on July 3rd right now. Um, in about 40 minutes, it'll be July 4th, so. Pretty awesome, eh? Now that we've went ahead and we've dressed those leads, we're going to go ahead and remove the shim. The 5 minute, which is really a 15 minute epoxy, is uh, dried completely. Save the shim if you want to. I always do. Check for proper movement. If you don't have proper movement, well, I apologize. Scratching. It's very nice. Let's do a 9 volt test. Taking a 9 volt battery and plugging it in to the bag. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna glue on this dust cap here. So I'm gonna make me a little tape handle. And we do that by uh, just taking a piece of tape. Wrapping it sticky side out around your finger. And you can uh, try to take the stickiness off. Rub it against your Pepsi Cola shirt here. So it doesn't take the fibers with it and leave a little fuzzy spot in the middle. That's not pretty. And uh, first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this on here. We're going to center it as best we can. better than we did that JPL. Then we're going to take a pen or a pencil or something. And we're going to, well first we're going to set a weight on this so it doesn't shift when we're drawing on it. And we're going to make a scriber line here. 
and you're going to use that to apply the glue and set the dust cap down in that glue. You can also center the dust cap by doing this, hit the back of the cone gently with your finger and uh, doing slight movements to adjust it. Take a pencil, draw your scribe line. I've drawn the scribe line and I'll show it to you in a moment. Pick up the dust cap, move it out of the way. If you look real closely, you can see that, especially if you watch. You know, this is standard definition. Um, you won't be able to see it real well, but there's a scribe line on there. And uh, I drew on the very edge of this. So, the very edge of the dust cap, the glue lip is right here. So you want to glue, make a glue line right under that, but don't touch that line. You don't want any of the glue showing under around the dust cap, but it really doesn't matter. Um, and uh, It's not that noticeable anyways. And for that, I always use the clear gel. Uh, tacky glue, it does very nicely. Other people use the scribe line to glue on, and I just thought of that, but um, I actually think it's easier for myself to, um, to glue the dust cap uh, just like this and smooth around with your finger and use that tape holder, which don't lose it, <coughs> and uh, use the scribe line as the centering um, so it doesn't get on the sideways or something. So let me make a new tape holder, pretty simple. Wrap that bastard right around your finger. Oh, excuse my language, I'm sorry. Wrap that thing around your finger. And uh, don't get any dog hairs on you. Press it pretty nicely. And we'll press that right in there. Very gently remove that. Look at that. She is a beauty. That is just sexy. A little bit of overrun here. Easy just to take your individual fingers and wipe that off, or your shirt. Don't let your mom know. And uh, use that scribe arm to make sure it's nice and straight. There we go. We have an Eminence 18. I forget what it's called. Not a Sigma. Um, something, else, something other. But there we go. It's all glued up. We'll let that dry 15 minutes. And then we'll apply the uh, PVA polyvinyl adhesive material here. And uh, have a good weight here. Don't need much weight. It's really not that it'll stick to it on its own. Just like that. Come back 15 minutes later, and we'll do the PVA treatment. And another 15 minutes later, we'll uh, do the edge gaskets. Before we forget, I finally found my little nippy cutters. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these leads off. the PVA material. You want to be generous with the stuff. Don't want to miss any spots because air will leak through there. I don't think you'll be able to hear it though. I think it just ran out. Another bottle, of course. Man, I never fail to somehow to end up cutting myself once again. Oh, yeah. After for crying for three hours, I uh, completely uh, coated the edge. I didn't really cry. I just finished myself up and got over it. We're going to take the uh, small economy duster, or whatever you want to call it. Um, spread it around. It takes a few... Uh, Turns to get to collect enough on the front ridge of the bristles to go over the complete hump or edge. Just around, go over it a few times. It's a very slow and tedious process. No 
need to cut the front edge of the cloth edge right here. I don't really need to. Some people do. I don't do that, especially on these Omega ones. That's what it is, an Omega. Because it's not needed and it collects dust and looks like nastiness. Swipe it up, edge. Dries clear, you make a nice oopsie, it'll be okay, you won't see it. Unless you make a really big one, then you will see it, because it'll be shiny there. Hopefully, uh, Garrett Claridge will accept this as a video response. Good friends with him, he's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah. Coat this nice and evenly. Go through and bristle it in. I might just might as well coat this anyways. I got some on the cone right here, like an artard. I'll go ahead and try to get that out. Just like that. That's basically what you want. Let that dry, and then we'll apply the gaskets. I'm gonna go ahead and coat the inside edge just as you know, just to be be safe. If you look right through here, I'm using my finger to apply it, get a nice even edge. Because you don't want that, that's terrible. You want this. And basically that's what you want. I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to the edge for the gasket. Pretty simple. inch bead. You don't need a whole crap ton of glue, just a little. But uh, don't be sparing. With the PVA with here, you want to be sparing, but within reasonable tolerances here. Gaskets. These are standard paper. The original was cork, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to precisely put this on here. I'm going to try to line it up with the basket. Because I am a perfectionist, I try to make everything uh, something that is symmetrical. Joys of asthma. All right, we're gonna go ahead and apply the second pair. You might have seen I've already drilled out the holes in the surround so it doesn't bind up with the screws that go through the basket. Press it down nicely <clears throat> and flip it over. Straighten it up so there's no uh, big gaps down here and small gaps. You want to make it mostly uh, the same. This is simply for looks, not for performance. And just set it on its face to dry. You can even see some of the PVA material coming through the back. That's what you want. That's okay. And uh, there we go. This is the ceramic magnet. This one doesn't have the uh, rubber boot on it like some of them do. This was an OEM model, but the uh, Omega 18 kit fit, fits this one just fine, uh, surprisingly enough. Some good tea to add some uh, more weight. <laughs> just a moment here. Um, if you look real closely, I dotted the uh, area where the glue comes in on the speaker um, with more black glue. And that is the Eminence Omega 18. We'll be testing it in the next video. Thanks for watching.
Hello everybody, this is Speaker Freak 95 and today, well, I'm not going to announce it, you know what time it is. We're going to be recoding this Eminence 18-inch uh, subwoofer, or woofer, and uh, I have all the parts ready. We can get this thing put back together and working correctly. And uh, compromising foundations of places I do sound at for years to come. Let's get this going. I had concerns in the last clip whether this full squeal would have to be reused. And I was delight, delighted to know that the new full squeal that I got right here um, is exactly the same kind of full squeal. Same diameter, same dimensions and everything. And uh, it even ma uh, reads DC resistance very, very close, like one or two uh, all put in here shim it to proper height. That's what we're going to take this old cone here. We're going to we're going to take this. We're going to remove the cone. We're going to get a, an idea of how high this needs to be in respect to the uh, motor structure here. So uh, bear with me here. So completely destroying the old speaker cone. We're going to dispose of it anyways. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of an idea here of uh, what we're going to do. And uh, <clears throat> setting the uh, spider down here. Because this is warped, you can't get an absolute perfect idea, but, um, and plus I didn't think about this, doing this actually, I uh, cut it. I guess we could take the new spider and fit it on here. There we go. See, that'll work. Like that. That's pretty much how it works. Um, that looks janky as heck, but I'm just going to get an idea of. Uh, no on what's going movement on this thing. Yeah, it's those two, which is cool. So, set that aside, have a harm's way. Um, pretty obvious. You'll either know whether it'll work or not. The speaker cone obviously will fit. Let's get an idea of what this will look like here. We'll just dummy all this together. That's not what the dust cap looks like. Flip that over. There we go. That's what we're going to aim for here. Here's the spider, the lower suspension, which uh, I'll show you exactly where that's going. Oh no, I just blew my speaker again. Um, obviously, this is a proper fit. Um, so, we're good on that aspect of things. So, we're going to go ahead and get the voice coil points away from the original coil over here that you see. This one isn't cooked like the other one. Fits perfectly inside here, so we're going to go with it. And it's also known to hold on to this, take the cone off, and uh, see how high these are set within the voice coil gap in respect to the back plate and the uh, motor structure here. So that's why we're holding on to this. Why I still have this. Otherwise, I would have plugged this into the wall outlet and had fun. That's what I'll do when I'm done with this, uh, since I don't need the voice coil. And no one wants a fried voice coil. Um, but if anyone actually wants this voice coil, I'll just send this whole thing to you if you want it. Because I have no choice but to just really throw it away or something. But I am going to use it a little bit. I'm going to take a part of the spider out and we'll do some measurements to see how high it is in respect to the back plate and so on and so forth. we've got the gap cleaned out. Um, while I was doing that, I took this paintbrush that we used from the last recone um, to um, get out all the dust and uh, fiberglass material and stuff like that from when this was installed in this last enclosure. And now we're going to go ahead and dry fit all the components. First of all, we can try the force coil. I've already done it, but I want to go ahead and try it again. 
So make sure it uh, doesn't bind up and uh, as you see it, it goes right to the bottom. There's a lot of room. 